greetings and welcome to a yet another episode of a crime case of a band that doesn't now as you can see I was out here on the dunes in central Nevada in the middle of August uh, namely because I'm a jackass uh, but also because uh, there's a couple good uh, interesting plants you find on an adaptive situation such as this that being very fast draining nutrient poor sand okay get a lot of uh, como se dice a dune specialist okay it is hot as balls uh, there's nobody around I did drink enough water maybe I'm a little low on the salt uh, if need be I'll drink my own piss uh, both uh, for uh, rehydration purposes as well as uh, for shits and giggles because I'm a masochist anyway I want to show you a couple interesting plants you got here uh, one of which is a very very uh, it, it's a it's a rare plant basically okay you only get it from from the dunes around uh, the wonderful town of Winnemucca, Nevada, okay? This is uh, Sorrel Thamnus kingii. Now, if you're familiar with the genus Sorrel Thamnus, okay, it's in a pea family Fabaceae, but you might be familiar with the Mojave smoke bush, known from the uh, Mojave, Colorado, and Sonoran deserts. That's a uh, Sorrel Thamnus spinosa. It's probably one of my favorite plants in, in the deserts down there. They get about 10 feet tall, you know, uh, very woody and uh, very mean painful plant to come into contact with this is in the same genus but it's uh, it's much more reduced as you can see it is a perennial there's a woody root down there where you have to dig but like a sorrel thamnus spinosus it does have those uh, pinnate leaves as well as uh, you got the glands you got the glands uh, on those stems very pungent glands and they have an aroma to them you also got a looks like a couple of trichomes and what this shit How's it? Yeah, it does smell. It does smell. Not very good, but I kind of like it. And of course, you got those spines, just like uh, Sorrel Thamnus spinosus. Now, there's quite a few members of Sorrel Thamnus. Uh, they are nitrogen fixers, okay, like uh, many members of their family. And they thrive in areas where few other plants can. Let's take a look and see what else we got going on down here. The surrounding landscape is dictated by Miocene volcanics. You can see a uh, some of the basalt flows up there on top of that peak. See that nice uh, brown color? I guess it's more of a black. Okay, I bet it's uh, very nice if you were to lay down naked on it in some sort of outstretched position as if waiting uh, for the golden god to come. What am I talking about? I don't know. You know, it's fucking too early for this. Anyway, I'm sorry. Uh, breaking it down. Here we go. Here's Ligodesmia. Ligodesmia. Juncia. Juncia. Junkia. However you want to pronounce that, you can see it's only got five individual florets inside that capitulum, that compound flower. We are talking Asteraceae, uh, sexy speak there. What the shit is it? Is that a resin dot or is that some sort of insect? Anyway, look at the involucre here. Again, you can see those glands, those little purple uh, dots and whatnot. Okay, now chicory tribe, or chicory subfamily rather, is indicated by those five teeth on that ligule. Okay. Most other members of this 28,000 species large family do not have uh, those uh, those five teeth. They only got three. Okay, unless we're talking chicory tribe. I think Barnadesia has it. If you're going, you know, the, the Barnadesia, the basal genus, if you're talking it. But uh, but we're talking chicory tribe right here. So anytime you see those five teeth, you know it's a chicory. And then of course, uh, entirely ligulate flowers. That is entirely ray flowers. No disc flowers there. You can see each one of those tiny florets uh, is indicated by that the purple anther tube with the little curly Q style coming out of it. Each one of those florets is attached to a ligule, aka a ray. Okay? Ligodesmia is nice. You got some really interesting Ligodesmia. You see them in Texas. You see them in Utah. Uh, you know, they like the, they like the dry areas. Now, the, the leaves are very reduced. You can see the leaves right there okay because it is a desert plant jackass remember that remember remember what we're doing here huh we're out i'm sweating out here like a moron you know in in late august on a fucking scorching hot the uh, pile of sand but uh the leaves are very reduced so most of the photosynthesizing is done through the stems okay pretty witty a lot of plants do it not too uh not too original like you know a lot of plants do it convergent evolution but still pretty uh you know, it's a trait you'll see in a lot of desert plants, okay? Okay? Pretty clever. Just, uh, just uh, you know, you don't want to get those leaves too big, transpire too much moisture, photosynthesize through the stem. All right, moving right along. Here we go.
What are you doing there, guy? You got some long ass antenna. You a weird beetle, huh? He was just flying around and now I don't you know he's landed here. I don't know what he's doing. Anyway, this plant, of course you could tell, is uh Asteraceae, the sunflower family. It's one of those uh you know woody shrubs, those woody uh, sunflower shrubs, you know all kinds of weird ass bugs out here. Woody sunflower family member shrubs that just uh you know it's got a nice layer of waxy stuff on its nice cuticle on its leaves and uh you know entirely disc flowers about well, a whole genus i don't know if the whole genus has entirely disc flowers but right here obviously it do but it's thriving okay just doing i uh, doing very well doing very well for itself out here and uh, obviously you know there's not much else flowering in a uh, late summer so it's a huge food source for all the, the bugs and shit you know you get more bugs you get more birds you get more life it's less bleak etc so you can see the alfalfa fields <laughs> alfalfa fields way off in the distance huh maybe you only seen those uh from an airplane before those big uh, green circles you know thirty thousand feet below you Okay, very important plant right here. Okay, may not be much to look at, but very important for the ecology. All right, jackass? Okay, so it seems boring, but you learn a thing or two. All right, and uh, now, well, you know, for one, you're not as stupid as you were before, and two, you get a little bit bigger of a, a perspective on things outside of yourself. Okay, a little bit of context for the landscape. What do you think of that? Well, it's pretty nice, isn't that, isn't that nice? You got wasps and shit. I saw some of those uh, scary tarantula hawks coming through. I see all kinds of goofy shit. Everyone's hanging out. Look, they're fucking over there, too. This is really grotesque. Am I going to get banned from YouTube? for? You got all kinds of the little guys, too. I don't know what the fuck those are. I'm not an entomologist, but... uh. Yeah. Oh, you like it like that? Oh, yeah, let's switch positions, huh? Huh? How about a little menage a trois? Get that guy over there. Ask him if he wants to come over here. Huh? Is that kind of gross? You ever go to Secrets Adult Bookstore? In Jack, well, it used to be in Jack London Square, but when they cleaned it up, they moved it. Okay, they moved it. Okay, Chamber of Commerce wasn't okay with its uh, its uh, location at the time, so they moved it up north a couple blocks where the riffraff still hang out. Ah, so much. There's so much uh, activity. Okay, can't get over it. Okay, all right, for real, though. Let's move this time now. Let's let's keep let's keep moving along. Okay, so you know with all the roots being exposed from the shifting dunes and whatnot it kind of looks like uh, tweakers or crackheads got into you know like a metal uh one of the metal light fixtures or the box or something just left the wires strewn all about but indeed that's not the case here okay let's not be cynical today why don't you just bear with me try to be a little bit of a little bit of positive okay okay the world's going to shit let's let's uh let's be pollyannas today here we go. Another member of the Fabaceae, whose roots we were just talking about, this is Ladyana lanceolata, okay? And it's uh, it's quite impressive here, okay? You can see, again, very uh, very shimmery on those leaves, and uh, and it's just, you know, I mean, it's uh, we're talking about adaptation, okay? Reflect that light, okay? Does say it's not too hairy. It's not too much in the way of hairy, or is it? You got some glands on there. You got some glands, but the trifoliate leaves... It's a giveaway to the family for base Of course, it's not in flower because it is hot as balls, but you can see it's a, a relatively long-lived plant. I mean, you know, more than a annual or a biennial. It's a, obviously got that long perennial root. This this guy's been around probably a decade, I'd say. Who knows? Uh, apparently, they can re-sprout from the roots, too. And uh, just uh, like most dune plants, it's, you know, the adaptation. You got to be able to adapt to those shifting dunes, okay? Got to be able to get buried you got your roots all over you probably if you had x-ray vision you probably see a shit ton of roots just scattered everywhere all throughout uh, this uh this dune right here but again uh here's that other the rare guy i just showed you it's too bad I, the guy i showed you 10 minutes ago actually forgive me i lose myself that's uh that uh sorrel thamnus again too bad he's not flowering okay because showy purple flowers showy deep purple pea flowers when he's uh when he's going off and it, they don't really get too big they get maybe two feet okay but uh and it just again it just emerged as a species on these dunes i would assume it's a neo-endemic okay as opposed to a paleo-endemic 
This fucking bee, is it a bee or a wasp? Get out of here. Okay, he's going for my crotch area. Uh, so I would assume it's a neo-endemic. Look at it, I mean, Jesus Christ. You know, as opposed to a paleo-endemic, which is a, a leftover from a much different time and only, to, only able to hold on in a, a very specific refugial habitat, uh, you know, whereas a neo-endemic, quite likely recently speciated, when I say recently, I mean, you know, last 20, 30, 40,000 years, maybe longer than that, but still recent in a great span of a geologic deep time, to which our uh, hominid asses are so uh, so frequently ignorant of. But look at it, very papillose leaves too, kind of warty, and and again, the smell, oh, okay, it's like, I don't know how to describe it, like if turpentine was mixed with a dirty sock, okay? It's going to keep you from eating it, though, okay, which is the whole point. Oh, okay, okay, so, you know, it's not, uh, it's not totally absent of flowers. There you go. There you go. See that? See, deep purple, I said, okay? Purple rain, purple rain. See? It's a beautiful, that's a beautiful, uh, it's kind of more, I guess, maybe, I guess it's purple. Maybe it's, it's more like an indigo. Okay, I just wanted an opportunity to, to uh, loudly sing Prince and maybe uh, alarm anyone who might be around you while you're watching this. Okay, any chance I have to be irritating as hell, I will gladly take it. But look at it, very diminutive flowers. Okay, and then of course, when that fruit is ready, it's just a tiny little bean. A little bean. A tiny little bean. But see those spines. I, you know, the smell is actually kind of nice. I kind of like the dirty sock with the... Uh, with turpentine smell, okay? And again, Sorothamna and spinosis uh, flowers look similar to this, a similar structure, except they got more of those orange, bright orange glands on them, okay? Bright orange glands. And this guy's still, you know, you can still, he's still got the leaves going pretty good too, okay? But again, they can drop those leaves when they're extremely drought stressed. But this, who knows how deep these fucking roots go? Probably very deep. You can see uh, it's just tons of them here. You know, it's, I would say I would say it's the dominant plant next to that grass. Okay, most everything that's going to be flowering now in late August is going to be a composite. It's going to be an aster, asteraceae. Okay, I don't know how they do it. Okay, because they're not succulent at all. But uh, here we got a grindelia. Now you might know grindelia as the quote ass rash plant. You know, say you get a bad rash on your ass. Okay, many species in this genus. And this one uh, doesn't appear to be doing it so much, though it is highly resinous and sticky. Many species in this genus will get a little, uh, actually not a little, they get a lot. They get like a big wad of, uh, of a white resin on top of that uh, capitulum right there, on top of that flower head. Okay, this one doesn't have it, but uh, some of the ones, you know, coastal California, etc., they're just covered. It looks like someone blew their nose or their you-know-what on top of the uh, capitulum. I mean, it's almost uh, it's almost obscene, but there's there's so much resin on these plants, and that uh, when applied to skin, it say uh, is very irritated or burned, or uh, say you you know you you slept in some poison oak or whatever, uh, it it's it's it soothes and alleviates the itch and the pain and causes the swelling to go down. I don't know the chemistry of how it does it. Okay, you'd have to talk to an organic chemist about that, but uh, many plants in a composite family for whatever reason are good for skin okay arnica uh well it's kind of snake oil but there's there's a little bit of science to arnica i think either way many plants uh in a in a, the composite family uh have uh have beneficial properties when applied to human skin or to a uh, itchy human ass okay anyway there we go grindelia you can see that very distinct capitulum right there those phyleries are recurved looking like little bricks Okay, looking like little Velcro bricks, okay? Little recurved spikes, and again, you could see, look at my finger, just, it's it's resinous as hell. There's so much fucking, and it actually smells kind of good. Doesn't smell bad, okay? It doesn't have that uh, dirty sock in the uh, turpentine brine smell of that sorrel thamnus. But, uh, but I, you know, to be honest, like, I kind of did, I kind of did like that too, okay? I'm not gonna mince words. But uh, this species, you could see, Almost sessile leaves. There's no petiole there. Okay, and they're covered in that uh, epicuticular wax. Okay, I do love a grindelia. 
great plant. There were tons of pollinators around here, tons of bugs and shit. I just scared them away when my loud ass came down to show you, but it's for the interest of science. And of course, it's a perennial. You can see the woody. It's a perennial with that woody uh, stem, so it comes back. No idea how long they live, but man, it really is fragrant. It is. I mean, it does smell kind of, you know, resinous and uh, chemical, but uh, anyway, might be those sesquiterpene lactons. Okay, here we go, moving right along. It's a nice ambrosia. Could be uh, ambrosia dumosa, asteraceae, except very distinct and very odd. The flowers are in a spike. You got male flowers, male flowers up top, and female flowers on the bottom. And a little bit of a uh, fragrance to those, a uh, little bit of a fragrance to the leaves, too. Nice uh, chalky green color. Any of them, though. Only a couple plants. And you got Rumex venosus, but it's not really good. Yeah, it's all dead. But again, just a whole layer of roots beneath these uh, shifting sand dunes. Oh, look, it uh, appears to be a species of a dietaria. Multi-seriot phylary. See all those bricks? multi -seriot. Many series, not just one. Purple ligules. Okay. Very tiny uh, leaves. Photosynthetic stems. Glandular. Okay, but over here, I want to show you this plant. Because this is a plant I've seen. I've seen it in uh, Mexico. I've seen it in a... Uh, in Sonoran Desert, I've seen it in Baja, and it's always growing on dunes. It's dunes. It's another dune specialist, and it's in the very weird ass uh, Ambrosia subfamily of uh, the composite slash sunflower family Asteraceae. This is Dicoria canescens, and I've actually never seen it in flower, and uh, it doesn't look like I'm going to be afforded the opportunity today either. But you can see it's got those very tiny uh, Ambrosia-like uh, buds. And when they open up, they don't—they don't really look like an like a composite. They don't look like an aster, okay? But uh, the leaves here are what uh, what first caught my attention when I seen it on the dunes near beautiful San Felipe, uh, on the Sea of Cortez. Undulating leaf margins. These leaves are tiny. There's a couple different varieties and subspecies. These leaves are tiny. When I first seen it, you know the ones down in Mexico, they get leaves like that big, but always very strigose, always very hairy. Look at look at all the hairs on it. Nice uh, indumentum, like a little uh, like a little velvet. Undulating leaf margins, woolly as hell, blue color, and always growing on the dunes. I, you know, one of these days I'm gonna catch this fucker flowering. Okay, well it uh, it's getting hot, and uh, there's not much else going on here, so I'm gonna wrap it up. I'll keep it short, but I uh, hope you got some out of that at least. Okay, always like dunes. Okay, and. Uh, Especially if they're dunes that are surrounded by non-dune areas, you're going to find a lot of cool shit there because they act kind of like an island uh, with a much different uh, substrate, a much different uh, environmental condition in the surrounding area. So you're going to get different plants and they're going to be isolated from uh, from uh, plants that, uh, from other dune plants. Okay, so anyway, all right, that's all I got for today. Uh, go fuck yourself, uh, stay cool, bye.